The alleged sonic attacks against U.S. diplomats and spies in Cuba, also known as Havana Syndrome, made headlines around the world. However, many questions remain unanswered. What exactly was intended? What is behind the unexplained illness? And what were the consequences of the whole story? In Havana, experts on the subject talked to Telesur. Fabio Lopez has details. A little more than a week ago, several media revealed that the CIA used coercion against people who were part of the investigation of the so-called Havana Syndrome. The cancellation of the investigations of the alleged sonic attacks made the news, but not a word to mention the damage caused by the mysterious disease to the Cuban people, which in the opinion of this expert has had to pay a great cost. In terms of political dialogue, but also on the family and personal level, since the closing of the diplomatic headquarters in Havana and forcing the ordinary Cuban citizen to go to a third country in order to obtain a visa and cutting off the flow of academic and scientific exchanges has rendered the diplomatic headquarters in Havana inoperative. Even today, there is still no compensation no restitution to the Cuban people for what they have had from the moral point of view in intangible matters. And from the practical point of view, it would be impossible to quantify the losses caused by all this eagerness to keep Cuba on the list of terrorist countries. The blockade remains. The sanctions are used, the punitive instruments, the unilateral coercive measures that all have the purpose of breaking the revolution. The sanctions are used, the unilateral coercive measures that all have the purpose of breaking the revolution. An interesting view on the subject has the authorized voice of journalist Raul Antonio Capote, who worked for the CIA as an infiltrated of the Cuban state security. He associates the coercion of the United States intelligence services to the participants in the research on the so-called Havana syndrome with MKUltra, the Dantesque experiment of the CIA to control the human mind. Everyone kept repeating that this was the first time that they had ever failed, that they had failed in their ethics. Which is totally untrue if we could give hundreds of examples of how many times in the history of the U.S. Special Services situations like this have occurred. And one example is MK Ultra is a CIA project that began in 1953, in which experiments were made with people of various types, prisoners, students, psychiatric patients, even CIA personnel were subjected to these experiments because they were obsessed with mind control. They said that the next war was going to be fought in the realm of the mind and that whoever controlled the mind would be able to win this new war scenario. Specialists from the United States, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, China, Russia and Cuba agree that the coin term, Havana Syndrome, is a media fabrication and the accusations do not stand up to serious scientific analysis, yet the subject continues to be discussed. The deputy director of the United States Directorate of the Cuban Foreign Ministry explains why on the island's local television station. In an election year, they are trying to keep this issue alive by obtaining promises of compensation from the supposed victims of the non-existent attacks and with the purpose of taking advantage of the existence of a law enacted by Senator Marco Rubio to compensate the victims and keep the issue alive and also to justify new measures against Cuba. In a future government if this or any other candidate wins, so that the sanctions and the course of measures against our country are not lifted. That is what is happening. What is still pending, warns this diplomat, is an apology to the people of Cuba for which it is necessary, she says, to continue demanding the lifting of the whole spiral of unilateral coercive measures and maximum pressure that, with the initial excuse that Cuba had assaulted United States diplomats, were taken against the Cuban and American people.